Now, one other thing that I noticed that you do is leaf mold. You utilize leaf mold. Can you talk to us what is leaf mold? What are the benefits? How do you create it? How do you apply it? So on and so forth. Yeah, so leaf mold um, is really uh, a passionate topic. Um, it's really my go-to to really create the foundation of fertility and soil. And so it's, it's really the decomposition of leaves from deciduous trees. And so um, primarily the fungi that is symbiotic, um, sometimes not always symbiotic. I mean, there's a whole consortium of different fungus and bacteria, but specifically it's more the fungi that creates this aggregate through a slow, you could call it, um, you know, you could call it a composting process. Um, because the, the leaves are decomposing slowly by the fungi that's really eating the lignus material and creating this beautiful soil aggregate, uh, meaning like big clumps of uh, this, these leaves that are being literally digested by the fungi. Um, and you just see these big webs, big chunk of white mycelial um, humus in the topsoil. And, you know, so this is used in Korean natural farming and Jadam as a primary means of uh, an inoculant for uh, growing, you know, IMO cultures, for creating Jadam microbial solution. Um, and so the important thing to note is that it's a consortium. We're not looking for a specific type of fungus or whatever. And, um, you know, whenever I've talked to kind of mushroom growers about IMO, they're always like curious, so what mushroom are you going for? And it doesn't necessarily work that way. We want the consortium. We are mimicking nature. And so we want that diversity. Uh, I think you had Chris Trump on the podcast, and um, he was talking about those DNA tests that were done, over 400 different species of fungi, over 800 you know, bacteria found in some of this, you know, th this was uh, IMO cultures cultured from leaf mold. But that's what we're looking for is really the diversity. There's power and diversity. And a big approach for me in, in how I practice agriculture is kind of trying to create these diverse systems, these self-regulating systems by bringing in the healthy cultures the diversity and kind of letting nature figure that out for itself. Um, obviously, like I'm trained in some uh, microscopy too, so I can look down under a microscope and kind of look for the players involved. But you know, you don't have to be a scientist uh, or even use a, know how to use a microscope to be really successful at culturing IMOs and and using them very effectively uh, in your gardens and on your farm. That's one thing about culturing on your own is the diversity is going to be far superior far more than if you're buying some of these microbial inoculant products on the market i'm not making a claim they should never use it never do that and that they don't work or anything like that but you're going to get much more diversity going this all natural farming route and kind of culturing your own absolutely 100 percent. you know and i'm not i'm not going to knock some of these uh commercial inoculants like i use some of them back in the day and you know specifically to your audience that you know grows indoors um, I did grow uh, an indoor back in the day where I was using IMOs from outside, bringing those in, but that's a careful process. Um, you know, if you're doing a big scale commercial operation, um, obviously you got to be careful when you're doing that to really build up the right diversity. So I think that, you know, indoors might make a little more sense for some of these different uh, microbial inoculants that you can buy, kind of bugs in a jug, so to speak. They certainly like have some efficacy, but um, you know, I, I would use IMO over over those all day long. And, and here's one big uh, difference between some of these bugs in a jug versus like IMOs. IMOs are cultured out in nature versus cultured in a laboratory. And there's a big difference between microbes that are cultured in a community where there's you know, competition and there's so much diversity that all these players are getting involved. I mean, only the strong literally survive. Whereas in a, in a lab where you're creating like a monoculture in a sterile environment, those cultures don't have the competition. They don't have um, that diversity in nature, um, which is really kind of what drives um, 
the power and, and strength of a lot of these microorganisms, in, in, in my opinion. So I'm not going to say that these, these uh, store-bought inoculants don't have a place, but, uh, you know, for me, like, I don't, I don't buy anything um, except for, like, a culture that I'm buying to reculture. For example, I take um, L. ruteri. Uh, it's a strain of lactobacillus. Uh, it was originally found in uh, mother's breast milk. And uh, so it's a probiotic and it, it's, um, there's a lot of new studies on, you know, uh, lactobacillus ruteri. And so I buy the culture for that to take as a probiotic and I reculture that as a yogurt to take for myself. So, you know, and you can do the same with these, you know, uh, these microbes for applying to, you know, plants and agriculture. That's awesome. So it sounds like there's multiple ways to kind of get to the finish line. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I and mean, for me, it all really starts with the leaf mold. I mean, there's a lot of lactobacillus like everywhere on our skin and the air. We can culture that as well, which, you know, labs is, is a great uh, companion and uh, really great for decomposing organic matter in the soil too. But uh, you also get a lot of that in your, your IMO cultures. So go to the full episode by clicking the outro card here or click the link in the description section below. Catch you in the next video.